Philadelphia Eagles will have a new quarterback in 2021 because Carson Wentz has a new home. That's Giovanni, a 13-year-old podcaster, big fan of Wentz. And there's number two, Carson Wentz, because he couldn't wear 11 because Michael Pittman Jr. said, I'm not giving it up. Wentz is now number two. And Carson Wentz, uh, presumably this week in a press conference, that Philadelphia media is not invited to. How about that? I saw... Philadelphia reporters complaining about it yesterday. What a shock. Philadelphia reporters complaining. Could you imagine that? But they were complaining. And I think they should have a seat at the table or at the Zoom session. Why are you freezing them out? Let them ask some questions. This is a news conference. It shouldn't be exclusive only to the reporters who will put their nose in the right spot when asking the questions. So I got a problem with that. Presumably, he'll talk about why he's picked number two. Giovanni breaking the news that Wentz will be number two in Indianapolis. Yeah, that's, that's hey, cool. I'm, you know me. I like the I like quarterbacks who wear number two. I definitely do. Uh, one plus one is two. He wore eleven. Hey, now he's got two. Okay, that's cool. I'm down with that. I I have never heard of that though. Like there, and, and this is news to me. I I didn't know this until you just said it. But they're not going to let Philly. Anybody from the Philly media be involved with this conversation? That, that to me, is a little odd. There's no doubt about that. Are they just letting Colts, Indianapolis people around the team? Yes. Or is there other, there's, there's no other cities or uh, national media that's allowed? I don't know whether and to what extent national media is involved. Right. A lot of these press conferences happen without anyone involved nationally. And, and look, this is – it's. I'm going to get myself in trouble, but I I don't care. I'm I'm old enough that it, I, I'll, I'll gladly get myself in trouble. This because it's the truth. Here's what happens: in a lot of cities, I'm not going to say all, but in a lot of cities, there's a there's a comfortable relationship. There's a quid pro course, quo. Right. Your job is to cover the team. You help us cover the team, and we won't be buttholes. Th- that's kind of the loose understanding. And sure. the smaller the market, the more effective that arrangement can be. So. It makes it easier for everyone if you don't have now sometimes it's unavoidable, as we saw with Urban Meyer when he got his introduction to the NFL and he was peppered with questions about the misguided hiring of Chris Doyle. I'm not saying that there are kid gloves at all times, but you're not gonna have any of the Philly media who would be destroying Carson Wentz with questions about what went wrong and why it went wrong right. because he's managed to avoid any of all it. All of it, I know. Any of it. Once he got benched, he didn't have any regular media obligations, and he was able to avoid it because there's no locker room access last year because of the pandemic. The pandemic has helped because, Chris, in a normal year, what would happen is there would be an open press conference. Sure. And it would be extremely awkward if the Colts denied access to credentialed members of the Philadelphia media who were making the trip to Indianapolis to ask questions face-to-face of Carson Wentz. They would have a very hard time getting away with that. Yeah. It's a lot easier getting away with it in the era of Zoom press conferences. No, definitely. And, I mean, you're right, Mike. There's, this is uh, I scratch your back, you scratch my back type of, you know, relationship with the local media a lot of the times. You know, as a whole, we'll make these players available. This coach, this coach is available. And then the media knows, you know, not to cross the line maybe in – you know, total defamation of a football team or anything not like that. Defamation. They, not, yeah. it, no, yeah. it's fair and honest criticism when criticism right. is deserved. Okay, we yeah. We deal with right. that. All, we Hey, look, we deal with that. You think we're ever going to have David Culley or Jack Easterby or Nick Casario on this show? Hell no. We're at the forefront of saying what a mess that team is because it is a mess. It is a mess. Well, yeah. And and we go and we go into it with eyes open that uh, that they're going to freeze us out. There's plenty of other people they can talk to. And here's the other twist, and this leads into the next point. Right. When all of these teams have their own in-house media operation, where the person who's interviewing you is a coworker who reports to the owner, just like the person that they're interviewing does. There's definitely not going to be any tough questions. And when no. Howie Roseman, the GM of the Eagles, finally spoke about this trade it wasn't in a press conference although presumably he'll have one at some point it was to wait for it the team website the exclusive which i always refer to it as as an inner office meeting because that's what it is you're two people commonly employed by the same person and you're having a conversation that's being 
being touted as an sure. actual interview. There's yeah. no independence whatsoever. The person's getting a paycheck from Jeffrey Lurie. This has been going on for 20 years, and I'm the only one that seems to care about it, and maybe I shouldn't care about it, but uh, that's, that's what we saw yesterday. So well, we have a quote board of what Harry Roseman said, but trust me, it's, mean, it's worthless. He may as well have just written it out and, and, and submitted it. That's what happens when you get interviewed by a team website. You're never going to have a tough probing question because if you ask a tough probing question, you're in trouble. Here it is. It's written up. He submitted it. There you go. Bam. You yep. get, can you If you can read, there you go. You don't want to read that. There it is. Yeah, okay. There's nothing there. It's, yeah. not, it's pointless. It's pointless. Uh, it's but pointless. I will say this. I like okay. Jack Easterby is definitely not coming on the show. I didn't know that. Okay. <laughs> you you've ended that for sure. I don't Nick Casario and 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 David Cully. I, I would hope that we haven't said anything bad about them. We've talked about the no, organization no, as but, a whole, no. but it's not right. their fault. Uh, that's certainly not. So I, I would hope not. I think Nick's a pretty honest, fair guy. Just in my you know years, I can working with. Him I, there. I can I can look. I can come up with a list of of people that we would not get on the show. Hey, you, Kirk because, Cousins comes on every Super Bowl, well, and by right. all things, hey, you would think he wouldn't come hey, on to talk to you. Maybe he, just t- <laughs> maybe he just doesn't watch. And you know what? He wants he that check from sleep number. <laughs> well, he wants yes. that check from sleep number. He ain't going to say no. He watches because he made you smash eggs over your head, so he watches. He knows. That's true. <laughs> um, but, 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 but look, I, hey, I, and that, that's just fine because – my, my only obligation is to you, not you, Chris, you, the audience, to be honest and authentic and true. And uh, and it's because it's not like any of our criticism is unfair. Even the Derek Carr criticism. But, oh, you hate Derek Carr. Why do you have a problem with Derek Carr? No, nah, there's just things about Derek Carr that I think need to be fairly criticized and somebody needs to do it. We can't just shake pom poms. There are other programs you can watch. Coincidentally, at this same time, if you want a bunch of pom pom shaking, praise everyone in sight, that's not what we do because that's not real. That's not real. We're not part of this, Chris, to just praise everyone. No. We praise those who deserve it and we criticize those who deserve it. Yeah, that's and we right. talk about the issues that need to be talked about. That's right. That's that's how I, I I try to approach the job with you know the knowledge I have of the sport, studying the sport. You know, oh, this narrative about this football team. You know, is out there. No, I, 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 I've been taught football by these people and watched the film. That's wrong. The narrative's wrong. You know, that's I do. I feel like that is, you know, our duty a little bit. There's no doubt. We're not part of the the propaganda machine here. We respect everybody, but we're we're going to tell the truth and 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 let everybody know some of the facts that maybe other people might not. And I know the people who are directly employed by the league or by the teams would say, well, you're employed by one of the broadcast partners, so you're part of it too. But uh, how, how, the, we're still on the air, and we still say what we believe and what we feel, and we'll criticize whoever needs to be criticized. I don't think, think they always love us, though, I'm sure. <laughs> well, I, they let it go. go. They let it let's go, not peel, but I don't let's think not they always peel love the us. Curtain. <laughs> let's not peel the curtain back as far as we could. Let's just leave it at that. Uh, there is something that Howie Roseman said yesterday that I thought was very uh, intriguing, even though it was to a coworker. He doesn't rule out drafting a quarterback at number six overall. Now, when the report came out that Jeffrey Lurie, yeah. the owner of the team, and this was a Chris Mortensen report, wants Jalen Hurts to have a chance to be the guy, it seemed to rule out a quarterback at number six. And now Howie's saying, I can't rule it out. Look, I, you never want to tell the truth in advance of the draft. Yeah. You never want the truth to leak, and you never want to tell the truth. And maybe they have ruled out a quarterback, and they hope by saying we're not ruling out a quarterback, someone will jump in front of them and draft a quarterback and push down the board one of the guys they really want. That That's the very loose psychology as the draft approaches. You want the teams in front of you to take the guys you don't want. So, hey, I can't roll out a quarterback. Please, I hope five quarterbacks are taken before we pick at number six because then we essentially have the first pick in the draft because we're not taking a quarterback anyway. So always, always filter anything you hear, either directly or through leaks. Right. Through that prism of you're ultimately in this process of you know where you're picking and everyone else knows where you're picking and everyone else is thinking, do we need to get ahead of your spot here in round one, wherever it may be? And, that's and right. so that's why I take all of it with a grain of salt this time of year. Yeah, and yes, right. we, we have to fill our content quota and it's newsy to talk about it, but, but we don't just pass it along as gospel. We say 
it should be regarded as as BS, the exact opposite of gospel. Well, yeah, there's your angle like you're talking about, and there's just the angle of saying like, hey, we might draft a quarterback in number six, hoping that somebody at you know pick seven, eight, or nine might go, oh man, there's this quarterback on the board. We don't know what the Eagles are going to do, and now they trade you know a king's ransom to get that pick, and the Eagles tr- go down a few picks, and they go, well, we were never going to draft a quarterback anyways. This exactly. is great. You know, so yeah, there, there is. You you got to take that with a grain of salt right now. Certainly, uh, I, I the, the thing at I, one point in that regard too, because yeah. we always assume. I think not we. I think fans assume when there's a trade like a flip flop. Yeah, that the flip that the the team that's dropping down a spot and letting the other team go up a spot knows who that team is taking. They 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 often don't. Remember no. the Forty ers right. didn't know. Right. They didn't know that the Bears were taking Mitchell Trubisky when they did the two three flip flop four years ago. Right. No. They, they you're right. They didn't. Uh, I mean, I think that's you know definitely a, a real thing. There's times where those kind of trades go down, and the team that trades down doesn't know exactly who that other team's going to pick. Uh, but but I, I will say this, you know, and I know I said this a few weeks ago. Uh, I mean, again, drafting a quarterback at number six. And Jalen Hurts has inserted himself as, you know, a part of the DNA of the football team right now. You know, he's working with the Eagles receivers and doing that type of stuff. To me, you draft a quarterback at six and you got Jalen Hurts still on the roster. Well, welcome to the Carson Wentz saga part two. I mean, that's what you're going to be playing with. So that's where I don't totally buy it. You know, and I'll say what I said, I think, the last time. If they draft a quarterback in number six, then they need to trade Jalen Hurts because that, to right. me, is not a, that's a recipe for disaster. You're just you're, – you're playing with fire once again, so we'll see what they do. But, you know, the Eagles, I look at them as a team and kind of a total rebuild here uh, for the 2021 season. They still need a viable backup. They regard yep. the backup quarterback as a top 15 spot on the overall roster. The question is, what kind of a backup are you getting? Are you getting a backup – who is competing actively every step of the way to be the starter, or are you getting a backup who truly is the backup, the Nick Foles backup, who, hey, I'm just here to play if the starter gets injured. And I still don't rule out Nick Foles making his way back to Philadelphia. I hear you. be the third time, nine years after he was a third-round pick, his third stint with the Philadelphia Eagles, because I think he'd be the perfect backup to Jalen Hurts because he's not going to compete to be the starter. He's going to be there to help Jalen Hurts learn the ropes, and become the quarterback, best quarterback he can possibly be, Chris. Yeah, agreed, agreed. And I'm, I'm with you. I'm not – I wouldn't put that out of the realm of possibilities yet either. I mean, they don't – doesn't they don't have a legitimate backup on the roster right now. And then that, that's got to bother them a little bit. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.